Hello guys, cows, and non-binary pals to Dabist ASMR. Since it is spooky season, I thought I would dress up a little bit. Um, and then I would read to you some spoopy Halloween stories. But first, but first, I would like to show you this cute little jack-in-the-box. I recently bought. Look at that guy. He looks just so friendly. I absolutely love clowns. Come Let's start that over. think I want to know her secret. Nope. Nope. Not gonna do that. So we're gonna start reading. Because that's what you all came here for. This first book is called The Adams Family Meet the Family. Adams Family. A. This is The Adams Family. Gomez and Morticia are married. Their children are Wednesday and Pugsley. Uncle Fester is Gomez's unusual brother. Grandma is Gomez's even more unusual mother. Lurch is the butler. Zing also helps around the house. They live in a mansion on a hill. The Adams family is a bit different from other people. They prefer tricks to treats. Don't even get them started on sunshine. In fact, they think thunderstorms make the perfect weather. See? Big lightning bolt. This is Gomez Adams. He's a sharp dresser. Just look at his suit and tie. He's got a nice pinstripe suit and his little cross on his tie. But he also has a sharp mind. When he gets an idea, he gets very excited, especially if the idea is terrible. This is Morticia Adams. Her style is like her husband's. She adores her black dress. Got these little parts coming off of it. That's interesting. She adores her black dress because it looks great against her gray skin. Morticia is the head of the Adams family household. She keeps the other heads in line, whether they are big or small. Morticia and Gomez are crazy in love. Their favorite thing to do together is dance. Morticia's favorite dance is a little dangerous, though. She spins Gomez quickly across the floor. Oh, how happy they are. That's so sweet. This is Wednesday Adams. At 13, she's the big sister in the family. You will recognize Wednesday by her braids and cold expression. Wednesday does things on her own. She spends a lot of time thinking of ways to trick people. Wednesday is highly intelligent. She always comes up with amazing science experiments, but her science experiments tend to be creepy. One time she brought a toad back to life. This is Pugsley Adams. He is 10 and the only person in his family with blonde hair. Although he may not look like his family, he is just as sinister. Look at all the explosives he has. Like his sister Wednesday, Pugsley is a bit of a mad scientist. He likes to build rockets and things that can really zoom. But most of all, Pugsley loves when his experiments explode. This is Uncle Fester. He has no hair and wears a big, heavy coat. He comes to visit the Adams family from time to time. He loves to sing, but his shrill voice scares people away. Look. Look at everyone running away. This is Grandma. She is Gomez's mother. 
She loves to go on adventures all around the world. She has a reputation for being a good at for being good at card playing. Some people think she is a rotten cheer, but they are wrong. She's actually a very good cheer. What is this thing? Thing is a hand. No, really. Thing is left-handed. He uses his fingers to walk around. He doesn't speak, but he can show you what he's thinking. Look, the pig is very concerned. I guess if I was on a wall like that, I'd be pretty concerned. This is Lurch. He is the family butler. He answers the door when people visit the mansion. The visitor thinks that his greenish skin makes him look like a monster, but he is not as scary as he seems. Lurch cares for the children. He's almost like their nanny. Okay, there is Lurch. Lurch loves to play the piano. He is surprisingly good. Thing loves Lurch's music too. Even though Thing does not have ears, he always snaps along. People think that the Addis family is a little scared. The truth is, they are truly terrifying. Actually, the only thing that isn't so spooky is how much they love each other. This is the Addams family. I love the Addams family song growing up. One of my favorites. The next book we're gonna read is SpongeBob SquarePants, The Big Halloween Scare. SpongeBob SquarePants was getting ready for a Halloween party. This year I'm going to scare everybody, said SpongeBob, and nobody is going to scare me. Hi, SpongeBob, said Patrick. SpongeBob jumped when he saw his friend Patrick. Sorry, Spongebob, I didn't mean to scare you, said Patrick. Oh, oh. Ah, someone at my work colored all over this. Ah, that's why we can't have nice things. I always get scared on Halloween, and sp said Spongebob. Everyone calls me Spongebob Scaredy Pants. I wish I could be scary. Maybe you should be a ghost, suggested Patrick. Great idea, Patrick. I can be the Flying Dutchman, said Spongebob. Who is that, asked Patrick. He's a very scary ghost. He comes every Halloween and takes people's candy, said Spongebob. That's so scary, says Patrick. And I already have a costume, said Spongebob. Spongebob took a sheet off his bed and cut two holes for eyes and put it over his head. Then Spongebob and Patrick went outside in their costumes. Some kids were walking by. I am the Flying Dutchman, shouted Spongebob. I am the Flying Dutchman's best friend, yelled Patrick. Boo, said Spongebob. You look like the haunted mattress, said the little fish. Ha ha ha. I do not look like a ghost, said Spongebob. You are right, said Patrick. You have a square head. Ghosts have round heads. Wait, said Spongebob, I have an idea. Are you sure you want to do this, asked Patrick? Shave me down, make me round, replied Spongebob. And then we will go to the party, said Patrick. Everyone was having fun. Oh, look at everyone in their costumes. Oh, Squid, or Beth Sandy is dressed as a fish. And Squidward is dressed as a clown. Maybe he's dressed as a vampire, I'm not really sure. And Pearl is dressed as a witch. Everyone is having fun at the Halloween party. At the Krusty Krab. I am a goldfish in a bowl, said Sandy. I am a witch, said Pearl. I am a clown, said Squidward. You sure are, Mr. Krabs Last. Where is SpongeBob? asked Sandy. He's too afraid to come, replied Squidward. SpongeBob and Patrick were on the roof of the Krusty Krab. I'm finally going to scare everyone. This is going to be the best Halloween ever, said Spongebob. See? Everyone is down below. Patrick lowered Spongebob down into the party with a rope. I am the flying Spongebob, yelled Spongebob. Give me your candy. Then a jellyfish came by and stung Patrick. Ouch, said Patrick. He let go of the rope. Help, yelled Spongebob. That's not flying... 
that's not the Flying Dutchman, said Squidward. It's SpongeBob, said Sandy. Everyone laughed at SpongeBob. SpongeBob started to cry. This is the worst Halloween ever, he said. I'm never going to be able to scare anyone. I'm going home, said SpongeBob. Goodbye, SpongeBob Scary Pants, yelled Squidward. Suddenly, the front door burst open. It's the real Flying Dutchman, screamed Squidward. I am the Flying Dutchman, and I am mad, said Flying Dutchman in a booming voice. The Flying Dutchman looked down at SpongeBob. Who are you supposed to be, he asked. You, said SpongeBob. That is the worst costume I have ever seen, said the Flying Dutchman. You do not think that I am scary, asked SpongeBob. No, spiders are scary. Witches are scary. I am scary, replied the Flying Dutchman. You are not. What are you going to do to me? asked SpongeBob. I'm going to eat you, said the Flying Dutchman. But first, let's see what is under that sheet. He took off SpongeBob's seat. The Flying Dutchman screamed and flew out the door as fast as he could. You. Hey, I scared him. I'm scary, cried SpongeBob. I scared the Flying Dutchman. I guess it was your pink hat, said Patrick. That's not a pink hat. That's my brain, said SpongeBob. Everyone else is running out. No time to worry, it goes back, yelled SpongeBob as everyone screamed and ran away. Oh well, happy Halloween. The next book we're gonna read is Pumpkin Pumpkin Patch Scarecrows. Got the most beautiful illustrations. Oh, and this one is done written and illustrated by Frank Florello. It's an older book, but I just think it is so beautiful. Look at that illustration. It's so bad to keep the shape. Among plump orange pumpkins and golden stalks of corn hangs a jolly scarecrow, overstuffed and worn. Old hat covers hair of straw and carrot nose, colorful patches stitched all over his clothes. Look at how pretty. Scarecrow family stands by his side with smiling faces, eyes opened wide. To welcome the sun that begins the day and warms the pumpkin with every ray. Listen to the wind that blows through the trees, shaking the branches and ruffling the leaves. Taste the rain that falls in the fields and brings life to crops that all the earth yields. See the creatures living in harmony, the birds, the mice, the caterpillar, and the bees. Soon, the sun will set and nightfall will creep over pumpkins and scarecrows and little cats. The moon and the stars light up the way as scarecrows jump down and begin to play. They ride the donkey, they pet the sheep, they feed the goats, they honk at the geese. Out to the patch, each pumpkin they meet, grow bigger, grow larger, each pumpkin they greet. Scarecrows made time, make time for music and singing. Hold on to each other for dancing and swinging. How oh, beautiful. But to little scarecrows, the fun of all is jumping and running and jumping in a pile of straw. Quiet time by the light of the moon, reading to squirrel, the donkey, and raccoon. A busy night ends with sleep and dreams of scary happenings in Halloween. At daybreak, birds will chirp and the sun will rise. Pumpkin Patch Day begins under sunny skies. Scarecrows awake and jump to their feet, climb up their sticks, and get ready to greet. Resting on perches, guiding the way, silently awaiting visitors of the day. So yeah. Look at him. He's just so 
happy. And then I guess our last book is actually four. And it is Four Scary Stories by Tony Johnston. One night, three little things met in a dark place. An imp, a goblin, and a scallywag. They wiped their little pointed feet, hung up their little pointed hats, and sat down to listen to with their little pointed ears. And what did they listen to? Well, scary stories, of course. And what were the scary stories they can think of? Well, boy stories, of course. Me first, said the imp. Me first, said the goblin. No, me first, said the scallywag. If everyone is first, then no one is first, said the goblin. How about you second, and you third, and me first? How about you two last, and me first? Suggested the scallywag. The imp stamped his little pointed feet and shouted, Me first! So loudly that the others changed their minds, and he was first. The imp's story. One on a night, black as ink. What do you think? A little imp heard a noise outside his window. So what did he do? He threw a flower pot at it. Smash! Throwing a flower pot was so much fun that the goblin grabbed a cuckoo clock and threw that out too. Bang! The clock broke to smithereens. The cuckoo, the cuckoo, cuckoo wildly, and that was fine. So without stopping to listen for the noise, the imp looked around and saw all kinds of things to toss out. Heave! Out went the pot belly stove. Ho! Oh, and the rocking chair, and the mat, and his hat. Oh, it was very exciting. But when the dishes went well, they made the best clatter of all. Hooray for dishes, cheered the imp. Finally, he had everything out and was feeling pretty good. So he sat down to rest. Of course he sat down on nothing because there was nothing left to sit on. Just then, he heard the noise again. Oh, how he jumped. For now, the noise was inside. Something's here, he thought. And all in a dither, he tried to hide. First, he tried to hide under the rug, but the rug was in the garden. He tried to hide in the bathtub, but that was in the trees, where he thought wildly, where can I hide? Under the bed, but no, it was gone, gone, gone. And just at the moment, a boy appeared. Yikes, cried the imp. Now he didn't want to hide at all. He wanted to get away. So he tossed himself out the window too. And now he ran. He almost flew. And he was so scared, he's probably running still. That was such a scary story that the goblin, the scallywag, and even the imp himself shrieked and hid in a big kettle by the fire. They all laughed and their voices were very big and sad because big and scary and they loved that. My turn, said the goblin hopping out. No, mine, said the scallywag and right behind. No, mine, said the imp loudly in his pointed ear. You just had a turn to scowl the scallywag. I know, said the imp. I was trying to settle the argument. I think the imp is my favorite. Who's arguing, growled the scallywag. You, howled the goblin. Well, I'm not, said the imp. Oh, yes, you are. You just, you argue just for fun. Well, the most fun will be when I sock you one, you melon head. Melon, cried Goblin. That reminds me of a scary story. And he started before anyone else could. The Goblin story. Have you ever heard of moon melons? Well, they soak up all the moonshine and glow like anything. And sweet mercy and magic too. All you do is start them rolling and they roll on and on. Once a fat Goblin was gathering moon melons when someone said, Who's stacking my melons? With some on the side of body trees, the goblin thought he was hearing things and went on gathering. And someone said, These are my melons. They do what I want. Roll along, melons. And he pushed them. Right then and there, the melons began to roll away, slipping, sliding, glowing, gliding through the silvery field. You can't do that, cried the fat goblin. And so he chased them, and the moon melons rolled merrily along. They slipped Around a tree, so did the goblin. They slid under a fence, so did the goblin. They rumbled up and down the melon rocks. 
throat. The goblin waddled behind them so fast that he might have caught them all, but the melons came to the top of the hill and stopped. The goblin was so fat, he went waddling right past them. Down the hill, his hat whisked off. He could not stop. Then a boy sneaked out from behind the tree and gave those melons a push. After him, he yelled. Off thundered the moon melons, with the goblin puffing like a breeze and screeching, Help! 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 Which didn't help at all. The fat goblins felt thinner and thinner and very puffed, but the moon melons rolled on, and they were just about to knock him over when he squeezed down a hole and was safe. He jumped up. He, oh, up joined the boy, laughing in the moonlight. That will teach you to take my melons. Then the boy went home, rolling the moon melons along. When the goblin saw that, he stamped his feet, shook his fist at the melons he had missed. The scallywag, the imp, and even the goblin himself were so scared by that story that they shrieked and hid under the rug. Now it's my turn, mumbled the scallywag under the rug. No one argued. The scallywag was worried when no one argued. It's my turn, he announced louder still. The imp and the goblin waited for him to start. The scallywag waited for them to argue. Finally, the imp stamped his little pointed feet and shouted, Hurry up and take your turn so loudly that the scallywag did. I think the scallywag's kind of the wimpiest of them all. A young scallywag tr was tramping, tramping along, doing nothing wrong. We saw a magic hat. He knew his be was magic because of the way it wiggled all by itself. So he put it on and sat down to see just what magic would happen. He sat and sat, nothing magic happened. But suddenly, something very magic happened. A ghost came right out of the hat, curled, curling like smoke, and tied itself in a knot right around the scallywag's middle. And it would not let go. Not for anything. The scallywag hooted and hard. He danced and pranced, and he rolled all over the ground. The ghost would not let go. It just left and left. And it tied itself in another knot besides and squeezed. So the scallywag screamed like anything. Then a boy came from nowhere and shouted, So there you are, untie yourself, for it was his pet ghost. Then he washed the ghost, rub, 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 and hung it up like a handkerchief, and it glowed and cried, Ooh, for it was very cold. Now I will wash you, said the boy, and he tried to catch the scallywag. The boy got very close, and the scallywag got very scared. Just then he saw his own magic hat lying near. So he grabbed it quickly, zinky zinky zoo, and poof, he was gone. The scallywag popped out under a toadstool far away. He looked all around and saw no one. Oh, I've never had a bath and I never will, he giggled. The imp and the goblin and even the scallywag himself were so scared at that close call that they shrieked and jumped into each other's laps. Then they heard something in the dark, so they stopped shrieking and wiggled their pointed ears to listen to what it was. The goblin whispered, something new is here. What? whispered the imp. I don't know. We'll poke it and find out. You poke it, whispered the goblin. It's next to you. So he poked it and jumped back fast. Ouch, yelled something new. It's an ouch, whispered the goblin. It's a boy, whispered the something new. The three little things shrieked, grabbed their little pointed hats quickly, said, Zinky Zinky Zoo, and poof, they were gone. Come back, cried the boy. Never, cried the three voices near the ceiling. How did you get here? asked the scallywag voice. I tiptoed, explained the boy. Sneaked, grumbled the imp voice. How long have you been listening? asked the goblin. A long time, said the boy. I'm a good listener. You're a sneaky listener, said the imp voice. Why are you here to hear the stories? I didn't mean to scare you. Who scared, said the scallywag voice. We just like to jump. Well, I just like you, said the boy. Please come back and I'll tell a scary story too. Mumble, mumble, buzz. They thought it over and poof, they were back hanging in the midair. 
I never tell stories to people in midair as a boy. It's not cozy. Who wants to be cozy with a boy? Asked the scallywag. I do for a scary story, said the imp, floating down. Me too, said the goblin. Not to scrub the scallywag, and he came too. One night, oh, the boy story. One night, an imp, a goblin, and a scallywag were feeling brave. I am so brave, said the imp. I'm going to do the bravest thing of all. What? asked the goblin. Catch a boy. Oh, boy, cried the scallywag. How? In a hole dark as coal, said the imp. No, in a trap, snap, said the scallywag. No, 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 in a bag, said the goblin. I'd like to see a boy in a bag. Yes, that would be nice, the others agreed. These three kind of remind me of Lock, Shock, and Barrel from Nightmare Before Christmas. They put a big brown bag in the woods and filled it with pretzels. When something goes inside, they when something goes inside, they told their magic rope, tie yourself tighter on the bag and don't let go. Then they waited for a boy to come and eat the pretzels. They waited and waited. No one came. It got late. They got hungry. So they started eating the pretzels one by one right into the bag. And pop, the bag closed. The rope tied itself tight, and oh mercy, they were caught. The three little things shrieked and hollered and bumped into each other because they could not see. Then the imps got worried. Then the imp got worried that a boy would come and pinch them. We better go, he shouted. So they went. They went in three different directions until they went nowhere at all. But their little feet were so pointed and going nowhere f so fast. They poked right through the bag. Mercy, what a sight. Then, sure enough, along came a boy, all alone and by himself. He saw something big and brown with six legs, looking fierce, sounding furious, and coming fast. And did he wait to see what it was? Mercy, no. Then the bag tore on a branch, and they all tumbled out, just in time to see the boy dash away. Scaring a boy is even better than catching him, they sang, and danced in the leaves. Was he really scared? They asked when the story ended. Oh, yes, said the boy. He was shaking like jelly. Then the three little things howled, and they thought that was wonderful. Now that we're friends, little boy, will you teach me to wiggle my ears? Well, mercy, yes. So they wiggled and giggled all at once and showed him exactly how. And then he wiggled his own ears in front of the mirror. Oh, my, how they cheered. Hooray and goodbye, hooray and goodbye. Then they put on their little pointed hands, hats held hands tightly, quickly said, sinky, sinky, zoo, and poof, they were gone. And where did they go? Well, I don't know. Poof, the end. Well, that's all the books I have for today. I hope that you enjoyed. I hope that you have a great, nice rest, and I hope you know just how wonderful you are. Bye.